Say you're in a movie theater, like I am right now, and the curtain's about to go up, and the person next to you turns to you and tells you exactly what's gonna happen at the end of the movie. What do you call that? You call it a spoiler, right? But what happens when it's the writer who tells you exactly what's going to happen at the end of the movie? We call that a prologue, or a flash forward, or a prophecy, or a chosen one, or a trailer, or a book jacket. Or when I feel like starting an argument amongst my writer friends, I might just call it foreshadowing. That's not what that word means. That's not what that means. That's not what that no. means. No. Stop it. No. Stop no. it. No. No. That's no. No. That's no. You've got that it completely word. wrong. That's not what that that's word not means. That. Stop. No. Can you please stop like, it. Don't. Why are you using it like that? Ugh. Sam. That's right. One video wasn't enough. So we're going to keep talking about foreshadowing. Foreshadowing and its cousin literally just telling the audience what's going to happen later are time-honored literary techniques. This is a story about a wise man named Milo. It begins on the day he was eaten by a shark. We do this all the time. You see, the body of a young man was found floating in the pool of her mansion, with two shots in his back and one in his stomach. Nobody important, really. All the time. Y'all, don't worry. The dog makes it home. No tears. Happy ending. Oh, by the way, you want to hear what happens in this entire play? From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. This is the introduction to a six-part video series about story structure. It was supposed to be one 20-minute video about the foreshadowing in Hank Green's book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. That's right, yes. <laughs> kind of like the I am not okay with this video. I keep mixing up the titles. But um, stuff led to stuff, led to stuff. Foreshadowing is one of the most well-known literary techniques. And yet, in the course of my writing and research, I've learned two things. One, a lot of us do not agree on what counts as foreshadowing. And two, it's because everyone else is wrong. Uh, quick question. How would you define foreshadowing? Okay, so we all agree on what it means. So tell me, does this count as foreshadowing? And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. How about this? There was a curse, there was a girl, and in the end, there was a grave. I never even saw it coming. Does a flash forward count as foreshadowing? The demolitions committee of Project Mayhem wrapped the foundation columns of a dozen buildings with blasting gelatin. Is it foreshadowing if it happens on the back of the book? Or in a trailer? Yes? No? Why? Why not? Why? <laughs> so now, let's ask a different question. What is foreshadowing? and the devices similar to foreshadowing, trying to accomplish. Storytelling is, at its core, relaying a series of events to an audience, one after another. And foreshadowing takes an event that will actually happen here, and gets the reader to start anticipating it here. Foreshadowing is a way for the writer to change the relationship the audience has with an ongoing story. It's a way to build expectations, to raise or relieve tension, to make prominent a specific theme. Putting information here instead of here turns out to be one of the most versatile and time-tested ways to engage an audience. This is about Lyra. Yes, the lithiometer says that Lyra has to make a journey. One which I'm afraid includes a great betrayal. Who's going to betray her? She will be the betrayer and the experience will be terrible. Important things will happen, and we will feel strong emotions about them. Or we can be scared for her. 
and scared of her. So welcome to Spoiling Your Own Story, where we're going to get really f***ing meta about storytelling. If you love stories, books, movies, and you want to broaden your understanding of how they work, then hi, you're going to fit in very nicely. In episode one... In episode one, we'll be discussing how Hank Green's book kickstarted this entire project. We'll talk about how writers play with information to hook their audience, and how we've all intuitively learned to structure stories in a specific way, whether we consider ourselves storytellers or not. In episode two, we take a deeper dive into the spectrum of foreshadowing, from covert to overt, and the emotional relationship between suspense and surprise. In episode three, we talk about the similarities between prophecies, chosen ones, and movie trailers. We're going to discuss Breaking Bad, Twilight, Macbeth, and Sonic the Hedgehog in the same video. It's sad, but it's true. Ted Cruz makes an unfortunate appearance. You know what? D uh, don't watch that one. In episode four, we look at the role the narrator plays in shaping the information the audience has at any given time. Giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles. Doesn't sound too bad. And we'll look at how to strategically use framing devices, ticking clocks, or even chapter titles to subtly affect what your audience is thinking. In episode 5, we'll be issuing a defense of mystery boxes, aka the practice of asking big loud questions and then not making any attempt to answer them in a reasonable time frame. The internet has feelings about this trope. It is not always great. It's not even usually great. We're going to talk about it. And in episode six, we're going to get extremely meta, the most meta, by looking at audience assumptions. Assumptions they've picked up just by living in a world where we hear stories every day, and how writers use those built-in assumptions to their advantage, either as a shortcut, people are always asking me if I know Tyler Durden, or as a misdirection. <laughs> And there will likely be an episode seven where I address your comments and perspectives because this is a really subjective topic and we have a lot to learn from each other. I am not the authority. I am just some obsessive internet person who spent three years on TV tropes. I hope both of us will leave this series with a greater understanding of and appreciation for storytelling. It's April. Okay. Final points. Will this video series include Bojack Horseman? No, it will not. That video is coming. Hold your horses. Sorry. When will these videos be done? Not soon. <laughs> I'll be releasing one video per month every month in 2021. So make sure you ring the bell and subscribe so you're notified of all the upcoming goodness. Be forewarned, there will be some non foreshadowing videos in the mix. I cannot help it. Sometimes, I do think about other things, occasionally. If you wanna support this project, check out my Patreon, the link's in the description. A special thank you to my new top tier patrons, Jessica, Amelia, and Sammy. You all are the best, I could not do this without you. And lastly, movie and literature fans, if you have any questions or resources or brain thoughts, tweet them at me. Uh, link again in the description. Be warned, your comments may appear in an upcoming video. I'm really looking forward to some healthy, respectful discussion. And of course, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the future. If you want to support this video series, check out my Patreon. Link's in the description. Oh no! Um... How's it going? <laughs> it was supposed to just be one 20 minute video about the foreshadowing in. <laughs> I wish that I was somehow in the shot so you could see the snow hitting me instead of just like a cloud appearing. <laughs> it was supposed to just be one 20 minute video about the foreshadowing in Hank Green's book, I Am Not Okay With This. Kind of like my I'm not okay with this video. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> eyebrows, eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs>